Out of love, God created all things from nothing and sustains them in their being. God created man and woman in his image to be in relationship with him. Our first parents turned from God in sin, which has affected all of humanity. We pray in the creed, God created all things visible and invisible. God created everything out of nothing. Everything depends on God to hold it in existence. Think of a hook on a door holding up a towel. If that hook disappeared, the towel would cease to be held in its place. It's like that with the whole universe. If God forgot about us or the universe for a moment, everything would cease to exist. God holds everything in existence all the way back to the beginning of time. The Fourth Lateran and First Vatican Councils in 1215 and 1869 to 1870, respectively, declared that God immediately from the beginning of time fashioned each creature out of nothing, spiritual and corporeal, na namely angelic and mundane, and then the human creation, common as it were, composed of both spirit and body. Why did God create the heavens and earth? Well, he didn't have to. He created freely out of his love. He spoke us into existence and willed us into existence in love. All the time, in every breath, and every part heartbeat that you have, God is holding you in existence. If you are a chemist, that's a pretty profound statement. It means God not only knows the number of hairs on your head and knew you before he formed you in the womb, it means God knows exactly how many atoms make up your body at all times, including right now. He knows exactly where every molecule in the mixture of air you breathe has been in the universe and planet. And he knows where every electron is in your body right now, something no scientist has a prayer of ever knowing. What does the church teach about creation? Well, creation could not have come from chaos. A universe this ordered could not have sprung from disorder. Rationality does not originate from irrationality. The Bible, even from Genesis 1-1, tells us that God created the universe with wisdom. I love the scripture. For he gave me sound knowledge of what exists, that I might know the structure of the universe and the force of its elements, the beginning and the end and the midpoint of times, the changes in the sun's course and the variations of the seasons, cycles of years, positions of stars, natures of living things, tempers of beast, powers of the winds and thoughts of human beings, uses of plants and virtues of roots, whatever is hidden or plain, I learned for wisdom, the artisan of all taught me. That's in wisdom chapter seven, verses 17 to 22. What does the church teach about the creation of man? We're special creatures. God creates each of us in his image and likeness with the faculty of intellect and will. That means we can think and make choices. What does the church teach about evolution though? Well, suffice it to say, we do not have to pick between atheistic evolution and a literal biblical interpretation. The first thing to get straight in this very difficult question is that we do not know the exact biological details of Adam and Eve, and we never will. Once you understand that, it's easier to navigate the rest. An analogy is useful here. Suppose someone asks where two grains of sand fit into the history of a beach. Not just any two grains of sands, but they want to know about the first two grains that ever existed on that beach. How would you answer such a question? Do you go get a John Deere excavator and start digging? Hopefully not, because there is no conceivable way a one cubic meter bucket could find two lone millimeter sized particles of silica. Your response might be, hold it though, beaches do not form one grain of sand at a time, and you would be correct. The erosion of rocks over time produces the sand which forms a beach as waves deposit sediment on the shore. Asking a scientific question about how two first grains of sand formed on a beach is scientifically nonsense. However, the lack of a scientific explanation never ever rules out a miracle. God could have created first two grains on, in space that would have become a beach if he wanted to. 
The atoms and subatomic particles could even disperse over time. Science and all its tools could not find them, though, because one, the scientific explanation for beach formation does not involve miracles, and two, scientific methods cannot decipher the past successive production of individual sand particles. Just like a beach, evolution occurs in events that can be described at the individual level, but not determined as they happened exactly historically. Generation by generation, parents beget offspring, offspring, offspring became parents who beget offspring, genetically alike yet genetically unique, and so on. Even so, we cannot know all the historical scientific details. There's a limit to the ability of evolutionary tools to resolve past successive events. Evolution is understood in terms of populations of thousands of organisms giving rise to new species over geological time. So no evolutionary model implies a first pair of human individuals because no evolutionary model ever would. There is simply no known species of any living thing that arose by the sudden appearance of two first parents. Scientific theories about the origins of the universe and the origin of man are just that, theories that try to explain our observations. As long as we do not deny the human soul or that God creates us out of nothing and holds us in existence and that God created the entire universe from the beginning of time and holds it in existence in every moment because he loves us, then we can always see science as the study of God's handiwork, a way to know God more so we can love him more and spend eternity with our maker in heaven. I'm Bishop Joseph Strickland. Thank you so much for viewing this episode of The Way of Christ. It is an excellent resource for growing in your Catholic faith, for deepening your life in Jesus Christ. You can purchase your own copy of The Way of Christ at stphilipinstitute.org slash store. God bless you, and let us continue to grow in his light.